Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and if you've been sticking with the channel for a bit, you may recognize my computer, Reptar. More importantly, today, you may recognize this LED light project uh, back in a video I did in about, I think, October, and it's a NeoPixel project hooked up to the MSG EQ7 chip, which is an audio spectrum uh, analyzer chip from SparkFun that uh, allows you to multiplex uh, seven bands on the audio spectrum to then be pushed out as whatever data you like today going into some NeoPixels. And I've had this lighting set up in my computer for a bit. Um, it's October, it's actually almost coming up on a year. Uh, but recently it had stopped reacting to light. The pixels were still kind of the default pinkish glow, but we weren't getting the audio effect that you are hopefully seeing on camera right now. And that's because it's actually going out from my audio recording device so that you can kind of see it in action. Cause you know, it's a shame to talk about something that's animated and reactive, but not be able to show it animating and reacting. Um, so I, because obviously the main purpose of it is to react to audio, it was a damn shame when it had stopped. And I, I had an idea of why. Um, if you'd seen the project video that I did for it, which was a really long winded build vlog, uh, it, I wasn't quite, I wasn't comfortable soldering at all yet. Uh, so I uh, stuck it in a case with a full Arduino Uno, which is a bit overkill for the pins I need. I only need about four pins for this project to work, um, not including five volt and ground and then kind of stuck everything in a breadboard in the case with the Arduino and threw it into a hard drive uh, cage down in the basement of the case. Uh, and I had a feeling something had come loose and I, it had been on my list of projects to do for a while to kind of get it into a more final form, solder all the components onto some proto boards so that it would be a lot more stable and a lot more finished. Now, a couple things I wanted to do in kind of like revamping this project. One, I wanted to get the Arduino Uno out of there. I wanted a smaller form factor board. So I ended up going with the Pro Trinket from Adafruit because it has that five volt power and the 328 chip, same as in the Arduino Uno. So it would run the NeoPixels, no issue. And then I also wanted it to be like aesthetically pleasing. So I found some black proto board by DF Robot on DigiKey, which I'll link down below. So it looks really sleek, um, not like the kind of like default proto board that can be kind of greenish. Uh, Cause I wanted to have it this time on the inside of my case rather than the basement. Cause I kind of wanted to show it off the fact that I had like a custom board going in here. So the first step in moving the project was to obviously test out the code with the existing circuit on the breadboard to make sure it would work on the trinket without an issue. And so I tested that real quick and everything worked as planned. Uh, I was also able to confirm that the issue was as I suspected a wire had come loose. So after I tested the circuit, uh, next step was to kind of lay everything out on the proto board. This was the first time I was actually laying out a circuit that wasn't on proto board that looked like a breadboard. So a bit of a challenge. I laid out everything in fritzing like I normally do, but this time also played a lot with the schematic and also the PCB layout and all those files will be linked in the Hackster write-up that I will also link down below, which will go into a lot more detail on everything in this project if you want to make one of your own. Now, one other thing with putting on the proto board, I want to make sure that the HD audio connector was gonna have a nice solid connection. So I used some mail headers to kind of mimic the connection that you'd see on the motherboard so it could plug in nicely. And another thing I wanted to do, I want to make so that the NeoPixels, I could plug them in and out uh, if I ever wanted to like take them out, use them for something else or anything like that, I didn't want to solder the NeoPixels directly to the board. So I had some uh, wire connectors that could uh, plug in together, um, soldered one set to the NeoPixel wires and another set to the board. So then they could plug in as needed and they were a nice black color so they, um, they fit the theme nicely. Now, after I had everything laid out, which I did beforehand, I took this like sticky tack stuff that uh, 3M makes for posters. Um, I'd seen in a lot of videos, like people use that for their soldering, so I tried it out and I really recommend it. It really holds everything nicely in place. So got that all stuck down and then I was able to solder everything in place, um, soldered everything to their pins and then, you know, bridge the connections to connect it on the back, which it was really weird, <laughs> like um, purposely, like connecting different solder joints together. But uh, it went really well, uh, came out really nice. Um, I was happy with how clean everything was. So once the soldering was all set, I brought it home, plugged everything in, tested it out, and it didn't work. 
Um, the lights slid up, but no, there was no audio reaction. So I did like a lot of troubleshooting, trying to figure it out. And it ended up being the HD audio header when it was plugged into all of the contact pins, something was shorting out. Um, and the way I figured that out was uh, the front two pins, if I kind of put it at an angle so that they could connect, I would get the reactivity. But if I plug the whole thing in, it would short out. I think it's because there is a pin on the HD audio header that actually can like tell if a signal is going through and where all the other pins for the header, like they obviously aren't going anywhere. They're just like kind of chilling out. Um, I think that's shorting it. So I had, um, I took two female headers, stacked them on top of the front two pins. And then that's how I have the HD audio connector sitting right now, which it's like fairly stable. It's definitely more stable than before when I just had like random wire shoved in there. Uh, so next, when I get a chance, I'm definitely gonna desolder those other pins so that it can fit more securely. And then I won't have to like worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's what was happening there. I didn't actually test it in the breadboard configuration beforehand because, you know, the headers are a little bit too short to breadboard. Um, but yeah, if I'd have to go back again, I'd definitely test it out first. Um, but after I figured that out, everything was working. I got the lights back strung through. Um, if you did watch the build vlog, you may remember I used these like 3M kind of sticky pads on here. I did not reuse those. Um, I actually had a lot of issues with like the top here falling down over time and having to restick them and put more in. So this time I just went up with some um, kind of rolled up loops of electrical tape and that's how I have the NeoPixel strip mounted right now. And that's been working pretty well. So, so far it's only been a couple days, so might update later. But yeah, I'm really happy that this project's a lot more solid now. I'm glad I was able to um, solder the first um, of many in the future proto boards about the breadboard layout. Um, that was a big kind of thing to check off my electronics bucket list. Uh, so that's good. I'm really happy with the pro trinket. It's pretty easy to program. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description for the Adafruit guide and how to, pl how to program it because it is a little bit different than your average uh, Arduino since it doesn't utilize a COM port. You have to use the tiny uh, USB but also keep in mind, like uh, for a project like this, you don't have to necessarily have it in your um, in your PC case. I know that's definitely for a, like a very specific audience. Um, what you could do as well, you could hook these lights up to like a sound system or even your TV. There's actually a couple products now that um, they like paste to the back of your TV and they shoot off light on the edge to kind of like extend the picture. It's supposed to like be better for your eyes or something because it doesn't just like stop. Uh, so you could do something like that with these NeoPixels and the MSG EQ7 chip. Um, so a lot of possibilities with a project like this. Anytime you get audio and lights, I mean, you can't lose, right? It's just a win-win situation all around. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode of Blitz Say DIY. If you like this project, toss me a thumbs up. Leave a question or comments down below. If you want to make your own version of this, be sure to check out the hacks to write up that I'll leave down in the description. That'll go into a lot more detail, give you links to the code, the parts needed, um, and any resources I used um, in building this. Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.